name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our show. Now, the title of this show today is actually All Things Are Possible. And it was actually filmed at one of our conferences in Laurel. And see, all things are possible with God. We serve a miracle-working God, and it all begins with faith. But see, so many times, the Word says, faith without works is dead. Well, what does that actually mean? Well, sometimes we need to put feet to our faith because we're here and we're saying, you know what, I'm waiting on God. And what God may be saying is, you're not waiting on me, honey. I'm waiting on you. So we're going to talk today about a mighty man of God called Nehemiah. And we're going to talk about how we can put feet to our faith. Now, you just increase your faith and enjoy this show. And the title of this message today is All Things Are Possible. Y'all say that with me. All things are possible. All things are possible with our God. Amen? Because we serve a supernatural, miracle-working God of now. And the Lord spoke to me this morning. He said, totally trust me. I can make a way where there seems no way. I can turn things around suddenly in your life. So today, I want you to increase your faith that whatever you need from the Lord, you're going to receive today. Because you didn't get out of bed for nothing today. Some of you are going through some hard times, and you need to be encouraged, but you need to know that all things are possible with our God. And we're going to talk today about putting feet to our faith. Because see, the Word says... Faith without works is dead. And we're going to talk about a mighty man of God today called Nehemiah. Now, I don't really think I've ever taught on him, so this is going to be exciting for me. So y'all just get ready. So we're going to talk today about Nehemiah and how we can uh, rebuild some walls in our lives. If you got your Bibles, let's go now to Nehemiah 2, 16 through 18. And Doug's going to have the scriptures up there for us. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the others who did the work. Then I said to them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies in waste, and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Y'all say, rise up, rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. Father, I thank you again for your presence that we feel. Lord, I thank you for your word. I pray now that you anoint me to teach this word. Anoint every heart to receive change us by your power in Jesus name amen now to give you just a little bit of history of these scriptures Nehemiah was not a prophet he was a mighty man of God but in fact he was a cupbearer now do y'all know what a cupbearer was that was a dangerous position wasn't it <laughs> because their job was to taste the wine before you gave it to the king to make sure it wasn't poison so it wouldn't kill the king so guess what? You might die yourself. <laughs> so it was a very valued position 
uh, to the king, but it was also a very dangerous position. But you know what? Nehemiah's heart was broken, and he was so discouraged because what had happened, Jerusalem, the walls after all these years were not built back. And in those days, when you had the cities, there was a great wall that was built around these cities to keep the enemies from attacking you. So they had no hope. They had no chance because enemies would come in all directions. And this broke Nehemiah's heart. Now, he prayed and fasted for four months. Now, y'all, some of us can't make it four hours. <laughs> four months. But after he prayed and fasted for four months, he was still depressed. Because you know why? He knew he had to put feet to his faith. He knew in his heart what he had to do, that God had called him to build that wall back. And until he was obedient to God, he was going to be depressed. And if you find yourself in your life, you have prayed. You have fasted, and you've been waiting years for prayers to be answered. Maybe it's time to put feet to your faith. Because how many of us Christians were saying, oh, I'm waiting on God. And the word does say, do all you know to do, and then stand and let God be God. But so many times we're saying, I'm just going to wait on God. I'm just going to wait on God. And God's saying, you're not waiting on me. <laughs> I told you what to do. Now, you can either be discouraged and depressed, or you can get up and do what I told you to do and put feet to your faith. <laughs> so that's exactly what Nehemiah did. And he was given leave by the king to go build this wall back. Now, I'm going to bring this up to the New Testament and do a little teaching to take us where we're going today. Now, in the New Testament, the Bible tells us that we are the what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, in 1 Thessalonians, Paul tells us we are a tripart being. So let me do a little teaching right here. I'm going to read this scripture to you. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, y'all say spirit, spirit. Soul, soul, and body, be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you are saved, your spirit man gets saved. Okay? Just imagine, here's your body. <laughs> Let's don't make it so round, Okay? <laughs> Okay. Who's that Debbie over there laughing? The, okay, so your spirit man. Then the next realm is the soulish realm, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Now, how many of you know the mind is the battlefield? Yes. The mind is what, that's why the word says to take every thought captive and renew your mind every day to the word of God. Because see, the enemy wants your mind. He can get in your mind and make you think, I'll never make it. I'll never amount to anything. Nobody likes me. And we got our minds that somebody don't like us, and they don't even know us. You know what I'm talking about? It's a stronghold there. And then the outer realm is our flesh. And how many of you know our flesh wants to do what our flesh wants to do? Now, I need somebody to bring me my prop, please. Go ahead, Tina. Behind the thing, it's a jump rope. No, that's not it. Come on. <laughs> on a jump rope. There we go. Tina, you can help me out. <laughs> All right, let's just say. All right, I'm going to be spirit. Go on back now. And that's flesh. So it's like a tug of war the whole time. Spirit. 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 All right. But the one you feed the most is the one that's going to win every time. And how many of you know when you haven't been in the spirit? How many of you know when you've been in the flesh? And you can say, ooh, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Why? You hadn't fed your spirit, man, the word of God like you need to. So it's a tug of war. Then what happens, see, the Lord puts a hedge of righteousness around us when we're saved. 
a wall. But what happens is the enemy knows your weakness. He knows your generational curses that's in your family. He knows your weakness. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to tear that wall down to get a foothold into your life. Because if he gets a foothold, then after a while, he's got a stronghold. And you look around and you say, how did I get myself in this kind of condition? How did I end up where I am today? It doesn't happen overnight. It happens when we let the walls down in our life. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to build some walls back. Because I'm talking to people, you're tired of being discouraged. You're you're tired of being depressed. You're tired of being sick. You're tired of not walking in victory. It's time to build some walls back. Hi, my name is Sandra Hancock and I want to invite you to get your ladies groups together, get your friends together and join us for our annual Faith Explosion Ladies Conference. Ladies, you don't want to miss this one. We are so blessed to have some powerful speakers this year. We're gonna have uh, Hannah Hopkins from Lifting You Higher TV Ministries ministering with us that day. We're gonna have Pastor Cheryl Langford, who is the pastor of Cheryl Langford Ministries in Buckatana, Mississippi, such a powerful woman of God. And we're also gonna have Pastor Hannah Cowling from Community Missions in Lewin, Mississippi, in the house that day, along with myself. So like I said, don't you dare miss this event. Now it will be October the 8th, Saturday, October the 8th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m at the Gathering Place, which is 3227 Audubon Drive in Laurel. Admission is always free. Now, if you want more information about this conference, visit our website, sandrahancock.org, or call us at 1-800-579-7350. Woo, hallelujah. One more teaching. When you were saved, and I know all of you are leaders, when you are saved and your spirit man is saved, as we're dealing with new Christians, you know, sometimes there's instantaneous change, especially when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. A lot of times I have seen people instantaneously healed and delivered from crystal meth, and you have too. But sometimes it's a process. Because I tell people a lot of times, if you like pecan pie before you were saved, more than likely, you're going to like pecan pie the next day. And what happens a lot of times with new Christians is they don't understand. And they think, okay, I want cigarettes, or I want a beer, or I want, I cussed. You remember when you first got saved and you let out a curse word, and you're like, oh, I'm not saved. Y'all are so holy in here. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Don't make me clack cast that lying demon out this morning. <laughs> but you know, the enemy will put those thoughts in your mind. Oh my goodness. And that's why you see people rededicating and rededicating and rededicate. I've been to revivals and they rededicate every night of the week. And <laughs> but you know what? They're hungry for it to feel the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've been in some churches and, and it would be a denominal church and they kept going down. I said, what they're wanting is the Holy Ghost is what they're wanting. They're wanting something to feel that inner uh, feeling in the presence of the Lord. That's when they're wanting to be filled to overflow. So we got to be careful as leaders that we don't, our job is to catch them. It's the Lord's job to clean them up. And it takes a while because as we grow as Christians and as we read the word and as we're filled with the spirit, all of a sudden you're going to catch yourself. You don't act like you used to act. You don't want to go to the places you used to go. You don't want to say the things you used to say. But it all comes with feeding the spiritual man. So Nehemiah gets started. They get started building this temple back. And the people were all in one mind and one accord. They would say, let's build this thing together. But guess what happened? Opposition came right off the bat. And you better believe when you're getting ready to build your wall back and you're ready to walk in victory, the enemy's not going to like it. Because you know why? He wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. He wants you depressed. He wants you sick. He wants you to throw your hands up and say, what's the use city boy? Nobody cares anyway. 
You better be ready for opposition, especially right before your breakthrough. That's when things get really, really hard. And we have to be prepared for what's going to come. So you got to understand that you got fight like they were singing today. This is war. This is a war. We are in a war, but I tell you, you've got the spirit of the living God living within you. If you are saved here today, you are stronger than you think you are. And Luke 10, 19 says, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and kill them in the name of Jesus. And nothing will kill you in the name of Jesus. Nothing will harm you because of the power of the living God that's living within you. But you've got to take authority over him. Take authority over him and say, you're not going to have my joy. You're not going to have my peace. Yes, I made mistakes and some walls came down, but you know what? They're going to be built back and they're going to start today. Amen? They're going to start back today. So we're going to talk today about building some walls back in our lives and some of the attacks that will come your way. And one of the first attacks that Nehemiah had was within. Y'all remember the story? You know, it's bad enough when the enemy is coming against you. But when you got trouble in the house, <laughs> when your own people is coming against you, that's the problem. And what had happened, there was a great famine that had come to the land. Money was scarce and, and food was scarce. And in fact, this is how bad it was. They were having to sell their children into slavery. That wasn't uncommon in those days. So you know what? Nehemiah confronted the issue. He took a stand and that was resolved. So don't be surprised that you won't have problems within. It may be with your family. It may be with your friends. But you know what? There comes a time as leaders we have to confront. How many of you like to confront? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody wants to confront. We want to pretend that everything is going to go away. We're going to push problems under the rug until there's so much dirt. You got to face it. You got to put feet to your faith. And you have to confront some issues sometimes and say, you know what? You're not going to have my joy. This is not going to be a hindrance. You're not going to do this anymore in my life. I'm taking a stand, and I'm going to keep unity, and we're going to do what we need to do. So at that point, that issue was resolved. I pray you enjoyed that show. I know it ministered to me again to say, girl, you got to put some feet to that faith because we all know what the Lord tells us to do. I also encourage you today to start building some walls back. See, some of you have been slack in a few little areas. We let our walls down. The enemy comes in and attacks. When we need to repent and, and build those walls back. Because you know what? There's too many Christians that are not walking in victory. And I may be talking to you. You may be saved sitting on a church pew every Sunday, but you have no victory, no peace, no joy in your life. And it's all because we've let some walls down. Well, I encourage you to build those walls back today. Increase your faith because you know what? All things are possible to those who believe when we are faithful and we are obedient. Now, right now, I want us to go to one of my favorite segments of the show that's called Hope is on the Way. And some of you need some hope, so don't you go away. I want you to come back so I can pray with you, but enjoy these praise reports. Hey, my name is Cheryl Lankford. I'm with Cheryl Lankford Ministries in Bucatona, Mississippi. And I just want to share with you today that we serve a faithful God. We had started our ministry. We had just moved into our ministry building on March the 1st of 2009. And then my husband Larry was called home to be with the Lord on June the 2nd of 2009. He got to enjoy three months in the building. And I thought that everything had just come to a standstill. 
And then the Lord started reminding me of his scripture where he said that he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And I found that to be true, that my God is faithful through all things. And where it seemed like that things were going to end, God blessed us with faithful people that stood together and stood with us. And God reminded me, because we all have fretful times, <laughs> and I like to put it that I would have my Trinity meeting, me, myself, and I, and we would sit down and have a pity party. And one day the Lord spoke to me and he said, your husband didn't call you into the ministry. I called you. I anointed you. I appointed you. And so you are to go forth for me. And this is 2016 and I'm still going for the Lord. The Lord is still blessing and he's still opening doors and we're still ministering and we're believing God for great and mighty things. We have people healed, delivered, and God is just an awesome God. And I want to tell you today that whatever you may be going through, or whatever you may be facing, don't give up. God is a faithful God. And what may seem like is going to be the end of something for you, it can be a beginning through God and through his strength. So stay in good courage. Stay faithful to the Lord because he is faithful to us. And may God bless you. Thank God for another opportunity to be here at this women's conference today. This conference has been a great joy to my life ever since I first started. And I thank God for this conference. I thank God for Sister Hancock, Brother Doug. And I thank God that they are allowing God to use them mightily. And that God is working miracles and wonders through their life. Because I know it's all about God. But I know God can use them and he is using them. And I give God all the praise, the glory and honor. And I just encourage people that are not coming to this conference that they would just come one time. If they come one time, they would want to continue to come. And I thank God for everything and all things. In Jesus' name, I just thank God. Well, wasn't that an awesome testimony? And if God can do it for one person, He can do it for you also. He's no respecter of persons. But right now, I do want to pray with you because it's no accident that you're watching. And some of you out there, you just tuned in. You don't know who I am, what I am. But you know one thing, you're desperate and you need Jesus. And maybe you've never made him the Lord of your life. But you know what? Your hope is only in Jesus Christ. It's not in things of this world. It's not in your job. It's not in your friends. It's only found in Jesus. And if you've never been saved, I want to lead you to Jesus in this show. Also, there's some of you that are going through some storms and you say all things are possible. I just don't feel like that today because I am hurting and I need a miracle. Maybe you need a healing and I want to pray with you also. But if you would like to receive Jesus, if the Holy Spirit is drawing you in, I want you to repeat after me. Now, you can close your eyes. I'm not going to close mine because I'm looking at you out there. But repeat this after me. Say, Jesus... I know I'm a sinner. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I was so wrong. But Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross just for me. And you rose again on the third day. And I believe your blood washes away my sins. So come into my heart today. And Jesus, from this day forth, I'm going to live for you. And Lord, I lift up those people out there that are hurting. They are wounded. They, are, they need a miracle in their bodies. And Psalms 107.20 said, You sent your word to heal the sick and to save them from destruction. So I send the word of God into their bodies, and I command their bodies to be healed and restored from the top of their heads to their soles of their feet. Father, I speak life and peace over all of them. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made Jesus the Lord of your life, find you a good Bible-believing church, and please let us know. Write us, uh, send us an email, let us know. And if you received a miracle, or maybe you just enjoy this show and it blesses you, we would love to hear from you. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. It's because of you that we are able to reach so many people for the gospel.
And we love and appreciate you, and we pray for you every day. And if you would be interested in partnering with us so we can reach more people, y'all, this world needs Jesus. And it takes money to be on television, but we're hearing praise reports all the time, and we know people are watching. So if you would help us, that information is on the screen. Now, next week, we're going to have part two of this message, All Things Are Possible, and we're going to talk about putting our feet to our faith, so don't you dare miss that show. It's going to be powerful. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope, and remember, friends, your hope is in Jesus.